This video is the second in a series demonstrating agentic workflows with Dyad. In a previous video, we showed the development of a multi-domain friction break model using the AI agent to implement, test, and calibrate the model. There is a link to that video in the description below. My former colleague, Clement Koik, has published a nice series showing how to build a thermal model to predict the cooling of a mug of hot coffee, including best practices for physical modeling. There is a link to his excellent posts in the description below. In this video, we will show how we can use Dyad's AI agent to implement that same model, starting only from the information that Clement has posted, namely an image and plots from the simulation. So let's get started. For the purposes of this video, we will switch from dark mode to light mode for maximum contrast. After launching the Dyad AI agent, we navigate to the resources folder where we have put some information for the agent. Here is the image from Clement's post that shows the initial thermal model that he built. It includes various thermal pathways that model the cooling of the coffee. We start by pointing the agent to the image of the model. The agent then views the image and provides a summary of what it found. It has identified the image as a thermal model for coffee and also identified the various components of the model and what they represent. While we could immediately ask the agent to build this model for us, let's ask the agent which components it will use to represent this model. The agent provides a very nice summary of the various components from the thermal components library that will be used to build this model and even identifies if there are custom components that need to be implemented. Note the summary of the model implementation. The agent also highlights that one of the challenges will be to provide the appropriate heat transfer coefficients that will determine the physical response. With confidence that the agent understands the model structure, we ask the agent to provide example calculations that will determine the parameters used in the model. We get not only some detailed output, but also a complete Julia script with all the equations that go from assumed cup and beverage geometry to the calculated parameters, including physical correlations for the heat transfer coefficients. The script is completely reusable and can be run and modified by an engineer to generate updated parameters moving forward. Note that the agent has also provided some insights into which physical mechanisms will be dominant with these parameter values. Model parameterization to represent a specific physical system is typically more time-consuming than building the model in the first place, and the agent has not only provided a set of parameters, but also a script with all the details of how they were calculated for review and validation. The agent assumed a coffee cup with a volume typical of brewed coffee, but in Clement's post he wanted to model the cooling of a double espresso so we ask the agent to adjust the parameters for a double espresso of 60 milliliters. The agent returns with updated parameter values and also a new parameter calculation script. In addition, the agent has provided us with a nice summary of the different physical response we should expect for a larger brewed coffee versus a double espresso. Note that the agent has identified that the mug thermal capacitance is more important for a smaller volume of coffee, and we'll use this information when we implement the model, as it was not in the original image. Lastly, we can ask the agent to create a report summarizing the parameter calculations. We then get a markdown document in report format. This report is also filled with physical insights about the process, expected response, and implementation details. Finally, we ask the agent to implement the model for us in Dyad. The model is implemented and simulated. We get output plots showing the thermal response of the beverage and also the cup, which was included in the model. There's also a plot which shows the heat losses directly from the beverage versus through the cup to the ambient. We can then look at the resulting dyad model that was created. Note that the code is nicely documented and even notes what the various components and connections represent physically. Now that we have a model and some simulation results, we can easily adjust some of the parameters. From the initial simulation, the mug temperature seemed quite high, so we can ask the agent to lower the heat transfer between the beverage and the mug. The agent lowers the heat transfer conductance and reruns the simulation. We then get updated plots showing the new thermal response. We ask for another parameter change to increase the heat capacity of the mug. Again, we get new simulation results and plots to review after the parameter change. Note the nice summaries of the temperature evolution, key heat transfer mechanisms, and how the results have changed based on the parameter changes. With this model constructed entirely by the agent, we can still render the graphical representation of this model. We use the auto layout capability in Dyad to show the model. This model is exactly equivalent to the original schematic, with the addition of the cut mask to improve the thermal predictions. Note that the user can then modify this model graphically moving forward, with all the graphical metadata stored in the model itself. In Clement's post, he modified his original model to also include the effect of hands holding the coffee mug. So we asked the agent how it would include this effect. We don't want to implement the model yet, but just understand the proposed formulations. The agent returns with several different potential formulations for representing the hands, including a recommendation for which model to implement. We then ask for a particular implementation, and then for the model to be simulated. The agent updates the model and provides us with some detailed information on how the thermal response has changed based on the addition of the hands. As expected, the hands do keep the espresso warmer, even without metabolic heat generation. 
Let's compare our model results with those that Clement posted. In the resources folder, we have an image of his results comparing different versions of his model. We then ask the agent to create a plot showing our simulation results versus the equivalent model trace shown in the image. The agent then views the image, extracts data points from the curve, and creates a plot showing the simulation results versus the reference. The results certainly exhibit the same trends as expected since we have roughly modeled in the same way. We also get a summary of the results and some statistical calculations of the differences. All of this output came from just pointing to the image and letting the agent do its work. We would not expect the results to match, even with identical models, since the parameterization of the model was not known. So as a fun exercise, let's use Dyad Model Optimizer to match the results. We point the agent to the image with the results, and also to some reference documents that show how to run Dyad Model Optimizer. The agent then sets up the optimization completely, runs the optimization, and creates the plots that show the optimized result. Now the results match quite nicely. We get a nice summary of the results, and it's interesting to note that the optimization tried to lessen the effects of the cup, as that effect was not in the original model. It isn't surprising that we could match, given that we didn't limit which parameters could be tuned, though we absolutely could and should. The key point here is that we ran an optimization to calibrate the model with a simple query and just pointing to the curve we wanted to match. That is an amazing workflow automation by the agent with Dyad Model Optimizer. Though we have gotten some nice plots already, let's have some fun and ask the agent to create some animations of the results for us. We then get several different animations showing the temperature evolution in the model, an animation of the model response versus the reference, and the heat flow interactions with the hands. With a full Julia backend and access to different plotting and visualization packages, the agent has the ability to create some really nice visualizations from simple agent queries. As a last step, let's return to the Dyad model and render the updated model. We now see the model including the hands. Clement highlighted the importance of model structure for readability and ongoing model development, and we completely agree. Stay tuned for the next video, where we will use the agent to restructure the model and also include the effects of the spear. It seems a bit magical that the agent went from schematic to the correct model based on its training. So let's try another image to see the response we get. Here we have an image that simply has shapes connected to each other. We pass this image to the agent and can clearly see that it parsed the image, has identified the different types of components based on shape and color, and sees the topology of how they are connected. But it has no context here as to what this image represents physically as we have provided none. So it guesses, but says it could be a mechanical system, a thermal system, an electrical system, or really any other system. With this workflow from image to model, it is entirely reasonable that the agent would need help identifying components in the model, types of connections, etc., and potentially even mapping to existing components. But with this information provided, we would certainly expect the agent to create the model as we have shown here. In this video, we have used Dyad's AI agent to build and calibrate a physical model from images. The source image was just a convenient proxy for any schematic that you could provide. We can extrapolate this capability to a hand-drawn image in a notebook, something drawn in PowerPoint, a standard system schematic, etc. The ability to create physical models from graphical representations using AI certainly is achievable, and perhaps we're already there. Stay tuned for more videos in this series, and if you're interested in learning more about Dyad or have any questions, you can reach us at sales at juliahub.com.